Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's take a look at how we can find the number of connected components of a digraph by looking at its oriented uh, incidence matrix. So this, this matrix is formed from, looks like we have five vertices and we have three edges. This edge goes from vertex one to two. This one goes from two to three. And this one goes from four to five. It looks like we have two connected pieces of this graph just by examining the data. But let's think of a computational way to see that. If we were to find the Smith normal form um, of this particular matrix, let's take a look at this right here. We could multiply this top row by negative one. So we'd have a one here at the top with a zero, zero. We can use this row to clear off anything below this one. So we just have zeros. Um, next, notice we'd be left with a negative one still right here and we'd have a zero, negative one, zero, or even we could take this one right here, zero, one, zero. And notice if you have a zero, one, zero, but let's take it right here because that's what we're gonna have right here. If we multiply this by negative one, we can use this to clear off anything underneath this one. So we're just gonna have zeros there. Okay, and then going down here, we're just left with the negative one and a one, but we could multiply this. Um, well, we can multiply this one right down here or just keep it the same, I guess as one and use it to clear off what's above it. And then you can change rows around a little bit so that that one actually creeps up here. And so you notice this would be the Smith normal form of the matrix, of the incidence matrix. Notice how many zero rows you have, or rows of zeros, you have two. Now those rows of zeros actually correspond to the number of connected components. Another way of thinking about it is it's the dimension of the um, of V being a vector, uh, you could think of it as a vector space um, or a Z module, it's depending on your point of view. But if you think of it as a vector space um, uh, for vertices, where each vertex is a standard basis vector, it would have dimension five. And we take the quotient of the range of this ma incidence matrix, which is R, because the incidence matrix really tells you what if you set equal to zero, like imagine if this is if this is set equal to zero right here, this vector, you're kind of in a sense what you're doing, you're taking v2 minus v1 setting equal to zero. So you're really saying that v2 is the same as v1. So if there's an edge, you're like merging vertices together that are joined by an edge until they become one thing. So that's what R does if we mod out by it. And if you look at the dimension of what uh, dimension of what remains, you actually get the number of connected components. This dimension can be found simply as the number of, of rows of zeros in the incidence matrix. So let's look at another example. What if we had something like, um, and let's make it rather simple, um, maybe see a graph here from this one. What if we had V1, um, V2, and maybe perhaps we have something like this. Maybe we have V3 sitting over here by itself. Maybe we have V4 over here um, and maybe it's connected to V5. Okay, so the way this is gonna look, it's gonna have a, and maybe make this directed, let's just do that. So this is gonna have a negative one, one, um, in the first column, and there's five vertices. Okay, the next one looks like there's only one other edge to work with. So it's from V4 to V5 down here, negative one and one. Now, if you did the, found the Smith normal form of this, you'd end up getting something like this. Okay, now notice how many rows of zeros you have. There's three that corresponds to the connected pieces of the graph, like this, this, and this. These are the 
three connected components of the graph. And we can easily see what it is by examining the incidence matrix. Thanks for watching.